one of the first things you should do once you have access to the Office 365 portal is to go in and update your user profile. By putting up to date information about yourself and your skills, it makes it easier for people to find those and to call on you when they require those skills. Now to do that, you log into the Office 365 portal as the user, go into the top right hand corner and select the people icon. Selecting that will give you information about your Office 365 login, but importantly now select the About Me menu option which appears from the pull down. In here you'll see information about me, people, blog and options on the left hand side we can select. But what we want is to select the edit option in the top right hand corner. Once we select that we'll be placed into edit mode for our profile. You'll see that there are a number of fields that I can change and update. The first one of these is the about me page. Now when I select that you'll notice that the ribbon appears and I can customize this with fonts and coloring and all sorts of different options. But in this case I'm simply going to paste in some information that I had prepared earlier. I can also go down here to the picture area and I can change my photo. So this makes it much easier for people to identify you inside the organization. To do this just browse to a location where there is a picture on your local system. Once that's uploaded I can save that and that will now become my profile picture. Now importantly notice on the right hand side here we have an option to choose uh, and see who has access to that information. Now importantly if we go to the ask me about these are typically subject matters that will appear in search so again these are areas that we want people to um, go through us and be able to find us during the search. So once we've done the basic information you'll notice across the top we can also go into contact so we can for example enter a mobile phone uh, we can also enter uh, fax details and if we want to we can uh, enter a home number. Now importantly you'll notice here that I can elect who this information is shown to. So in this case I've elected to select for the home phone to only be seen by me. The office location uh, again we can put that in there and select it from an option if they have already been created. Now in Assistant, if we have that set up in our hierarchy, we can simply locate that person in our tenant. So we go into our tenant and we do a search for the relevant person and they should then appear and we can add them as an assistant automatically. Now once we complete the contact details, the next option is details. So again, we can go in here and we can, for example, uh, put information about projects that we have uh, again worked on. If those projects haven't been created in, in uh, Office 365, we can just type them in and they'll be added to the list for us to um, work on uh, later. So I put in here, for example, card detailing. You'll see that I'm not prompted because that is the first time I've entered that. In here, I can put um, skills that I have. So I've already put in a number of uh, skills already to make it easier for me to pull these up. Now, again, these are very important because these could be criteria in which colleagues and peers are searching. Now we I can enter our school, we can enter um, birth dates and to make it easy and put a birthday list together and we can put our uh, interests in here as well. So again gives us a whole profile about us again and the idea is is to make it easier for people inside our organization to search for us and to find people who are subject matter experts. Now once we get to details, you'll notice that I can select the ellipse here. So the ellipse now allows me to pull down the option to go to news feed settings. If I'm using social media, I can put in the social media tags I'm searching for, the hashtags. I can choose which email notifications that I want. And down the bottom here, you'll also see that I have the ability to elect to which activities in my news feed that I will be notified about. So in this case, I've selected all of those. The final option available under the ellipse is the language and region settings and in most cases you will not need to change any of these. These are taken from the defaults for your site. You may elect to add an additional language if you want but you will find that things like your time zone, locale and calendar are all basically set by your organisation. Now once that is complete what you need to do is go down to the bottom and select the button save all and close. Doing so, you'll be prompted to say that some of these updates may take a little while to filter through to the system. So we go OK there. Now what you should see is when it comes back, you'll see that the photo has been updated. Information about you now appears on 
the uh, right hand side and that will be available to all other users in your tenant if you select more information you'll see that the information you've chosen to make public in this case the phone numbers and the past projects will also be available um, potentially to others now all of this information will be available when um, users use search within SharePoint Online so that makes it nice and easy for them to work with so again what we do is we go into our Office 365 portal in a browser we then in the top right hand corner we select the uh, people icon and then we can go in there and select the about me option which will take us to the option for our profile now if we want we can go back return in there and we can edit that profile again and update that with information about future uh, additional projects and work qualifications and skills that we have but importantly remember that this should be one of the first tasks that you do when connecting with Office 365 to make sure that all your information about you and your skills and the organization end up in a location that is searchable by all members within your business so there we go thank you very much for watching